Thank you all for joining. I'm super excited that we can have this webinar today. Um, my name is Joel. I am the account executive at UserBrain. And with me is Samantha from Customer Support, who is going to be answering all of your questions in the chat box during the webinar, and also Jonathan from Customer Support. So thanks to the team. Thanks to you for joining. And we're very, very glad to have you. So just a few uh, organizational things. If you have any questions that can be answered right away, then please be so kind as to write them in either the chat box or the Q&A section. Uh, Samantha will be handling both and she will be answering uh, all of your questions, but we will also have a Q&A session at the end of the presentation. So if there is something that you would like to discuss a little bit more in depth or that you would like me to answer directly, then please hold on to those questions until the end. And then you can let us know and we will answer them for you. So yeah, thank you very much. As I mentioned, my name is Joel, and I am super excited to guide you through UserBrain and show you a little bit how you can use our tool for user testing and for the purposes of your company. So just quickly, what are we going to talk about today? We're going to start talking about the video player to see the end results of what you can get at UserBrain. We're going to talk about how to create a test. We can talk about targeting and how you get your target audience. And then finally, we're gonna talk a little bit about pricing and see which plans are best for your company or for your individual purposes. And as I mentioned earlier, we're gonna end with a Q&A session. So then all of you can ask me questions and I am gonna to try to answer all of them. Great. So first of all, what is user brain? What is user testing? Some of you may already know and be familiar with the concept of user testing. So user testing is a way of figuring out how your designs, your website, and uh, basically anything you can link to works with real people. So what you do is you create a set of tasks for your prototype, your Figma prototype, your website, or even your branding, and you ask a tester to perform these tasks. This is gonna be recorded in a five to 20 minute video. And the video contains both the screen recording of the test and also the voiceover. So the voiceover is basically the tester talking as they are performing the test, telling you what works for them, where the pain points are, uh, what maybe is a little bit frustrating, UX wise, and of course, giving you the feedback that you need to improve those details either before you launch the prototype and turn it into a live website or what is also very helpful is having regular user testing going on so that you can always control the bugs that might appear on your live website. That's just a general concept. We're going to go deeper into that later on. But to answer that question, what is user testing? Um, and as I say, if you have any questions later on, then please let me know. We will start having a look at the actual video player and see what the final results are of a user brain test. So I'm gonna share my screen here. So this is actually our first webinar. We've done product demos before. This is the first time that we do it in a webinar format. So if something goes wrong, please um, have, cut us some slack and let me know if there's anything wrong with the screen sharing, that would be amazing. Um, so this is the first thing we're gonna have a look at. And I would like to show you how a testing video looks like so there we go so this is our native video player where you can review the testing videos of course you can also download the videos and process them with your own crm or just have them on your desktop and share the videos so that co-workers customers if you're an agency for example example, can also have a look at that. Um, you can also report a problem. And this is a really great feature about user brain because we have a 100% satisfaction guarantee. So if you write your issue with the video, whatever makes this video not satisfactory into this box and send the problem report, then my amazing colleagues from customer support, which at this time are Samantha and Jonathan, will review this request and they're really quick refunding the credit. So within 24 hours, you will have a refunded credit on your account and then you can run this test again with a new tester. So that is the 100% satisfaction guarantee uh, we have, as I mentioned, Samantha and John are really quick in answering. So please send them your requests either here or directly via mail. 
Let's have a look at a snippet from a user test just so that we get a better feeling as to what this is and what this can do for you. Um, so I'm just gonna share my sound here. Let me know if you can see it well. And we're just gonna watch the first seconds of this test, okay? So let's go. Which three words would you use to describe this page? Please explain briefly your answer. See, I, I never really like these pick three words things because it, it's it, it, it's not the way that I think. Um, I mean, I could give you terms like clean, organized, uh, updated, uh, like, in a, you know, it's, it's softer tones that, you know, it's not, not like a harsh black on white. They've softened up the tones and things like that. And you know, it's visually interesting. I like to so just one very short snippet so that you can get an idea of how this looks like. As you can see, you can see the tester interacting with the website and providing feedback by speaking along. We encourage our testers to say anything that they think, feel related with this website uh, so that you can get that feedback in the end. Uh, as you can see, we have a mix of different tasks. So in this case, the tester was answering a uh, text response. Now, the text response is a little bit of a mix between quantitative and qualitative testing because you do have this um, this, this numeric feedback that you get in the form of the words that they write. Um, we also have other task types that are more a little bit into quantitative, like for example, single choice and multiple choice questions. But the base of a user test, of a uh, UX test, as you can see it here, is definitely qualitative. So what does this mean? It means that the most or the most important part of the feedback will come from what the tester is telling you. What is the advantage to this type of testing opposed to, for example, surveys? Well, in this type of testing, you don't only get the answer from the tester, you also hear why they provide this answer, why they click on, for example, the single choice answer. Um, a lot of you may be familiar with quantitative tools. These are really great because they provide heat maps and so on. Um, the best mix is really having one quantitative tool and one qualitative tool because the quantitative tool will tell you what's going on on your website and then we come in to tell you why it is going on on the website and this is actually what will help you to make the necessary changes. As you can see here we have a task bar. This serves both as an overview of the tasks that you have created and also as a timestamp. So you can click directly and create an account and do and then this will take you to that part of the video. So if you have a vast, a large quantity of videos uh, and you just want to review some of them completely and then go into one specific timestamp, then this is where you would do so and just review that one part. Here in the notes, you can take your own notes. And this is really good if you're collaborating with a team. So at UserBrain, our plans include multiple team members that you can include into the, uh, into the testing, into the account, and everyone can work on the same account on the same space and collaborate also here via the notes section. So you will see who is writing or who is taking the note. And again, this also serves a phone based application problem. that you can adapt down here so that you get the exact timestamp that you want. And then team members can just click on this note and review the video uh, from there. So this is um, everything that has to do with our native video player. As mentioned, you can also, of course, download the video in an MP4 or simply share a link. Now, how do we get from the very starting point to this point where we actually have a final video? This goes, or you would go here to dashboard. And now let's create a test together. So we go to create new test. And then here where it says test name, we just want to enter the name that we give the test. And now here in test URL, you want to enter the start point for your tester to begin the test with. Now, this can be a live website. For example, I can just enter userbrain.com and then the tester is going to be redirected uh, to our homepage, our landing page. And then from there on, I can guide them using tasks or multiple choice questions and so on through the website. So the tester is by no means limited to this test URL. This is really just the start point for the tester. If you are a designer that is testing prototypes instead of a live website, then of course you can also do that. For example, if you're using a Figma uh, prototype, then you would just upload the Figma link, set it on public, and then enter the test link or the Figma link here as test link. 
I mentioned earlier on that you can also use user brain to test your branding, for example. You would do this just by, for example, uploading either prototype, uh, yeah, prototype links or live website or even PDF um, files up to a Google Docs, for example, and just entering the Google Docs link. So it really depends on how creatively you use this tool. Um, but everything that can be linked to can be displayed here and can be tested by the testers. You would select your language here. We currently offer uh, testing in English, German, and Spanish. So let's just click English um, because this is or most of our testers or most of our customers test in, in English. And let's see the different templates that we have. So a template is really something very helpful, especially if this is one of the first user tests that you are creating, because these are structures that we have created that we have proven to be successful. And not only the structure, but also the task uh, phrasing. So you can definitely pick one of the templates. For example, let's say I just want to test my company site and still adapt whatever I need here uh, to adapt in the, the task type. Now, this is the original task, which just is a task that tells my tester what to do. A lot of our customers like to set the first task as sort of a scenario task, telling the customer, for example, imagine you are in this situation and you want to achieve X, Y, and Z. How would you go about to do that? How does this website appeal to you? And so on. So the tasks are unlimited with us, which means that you can definitely use the first task as uh, this scenario setting task. We also have, as I mentioned, multiple choice questions, rating scales, single choice questions, and text responses, written responses. And then we also have the redirect function. Now, the redirect function is really a cool function. If you are doing, for example, prototype testing and you wanna have an A-B test, then you would do this with the redirect function. You start with the A prototype, um, entering the prototype link here in the test URL. You ask all of your questions, you set the tasks, you set the rating scales and so on and so forth. And then maybe in the middle of the test, you would just click on the redirect function and the tester is gonna be sent to the next prototype, in this case, the B prototype. And then from there on, you can go asking the next questions. Um, this is not going to be an extra credit that you're going to be spending. It's still included into the same test. So it's still in the same video. So really feel free as you to use as many redirect functions as you'd like. Another option of using this redirect function um, is, for example, if you want to test your live website against a competitor's website. So if there is a competitor that is doing very well, that has a very uh, nicely built website, um, then you can redirect the tester to first to your website and then to the competitor's website or the other way around and then see uh, what insights you can gain comparing these two to each other. Everything that is more quantitative, like single choice, multiple choice rating scales and text responses, this is gonna be gathered in a CSV report at the end of the test so you can download it and then have all of the numeric uh, data on one sheet of paper. When we're done setting up our test, we want to go here to get testers. Oops, I forgot to enter something here, of course, the redirect. So there we go. Now we just go to get testers here. We have a pool of about 85,000 testers all over the world. For now, we are having testers in the countries of uh, USA, Canada, UK, uh, Germany, Australia, South Africa, and just as from today, Austria. So that's a new release, really cool. Um, and these are the countries where you can pick testers from. So here you can choose your device type, the country, and then age range and gender. And these are demographics that we have already pre-selected. So if you click on, let's say, US 18 to 34 uh, years age range, then only these testers that fall into these categories are gonna receive the test in the first place. Uh, later on, if you wanna go more into depth and you want to select screening questions, you can of course also do this over the screening button. Now, the screening 
the screening uh, tool is maybe a little bit different from what you might know uh, in other user testing tools because it doesn't give you the options of like clicking different categories and then getting the pool of testers. It's a much more flexible tool. We did this on purpose, of course, because we do not want to limit the options that the customer has to select their target audience. So in this screening tool, what you want to do is you want to ask about a certain feature that you think is relevant for your testing and then add the different answers here. Two recommendations that we'd like to give when it comes to screening is, first of all, don't overdo it. We know a lot of customers that really love to delve into screening questions and really limit their target audience that much that it just doesn't become, or it's just not possible to get really that specific kind of a tester. Um, and then also from our point of view, it's not always that necessary. So something that most of you probably know, but I, I like to mention is that your marketing target group does not necessarily have to be your testing target group. So the people that are good testers for your website don't necessarily need to be the people that also want to buy your product or purchase your service. And this is really important when it comes to targeting and, and, and zooming in on the target audience because it does not need to be the marketing audience. This is the one tip that we like to give. The other tip is try to avoid yes and no questions. So yes and no questions um, tend to be biased towards yes, which means that the tester is more likely to click on yes to perform the test. Let's, let me give you an example. If you want to test uh, with people that are dog owners and have a dog as a pet, then what you do not want to do is you don't want to ask, do you have a dog, yes or no? You want to ask about which pets the person has and then enter dog, cat, rattlesnake or whatever you want into the other boxes. These can be really just random uh, random categories that it, it are not really important to you because you would click on reject anyway and just approve dog. And this will ensure that really only people that have a dog and click on dog will enter the test and then you're gonna get your exact target audience. Once you have the screening questions and the demographic options set, you would go here to continue and select the exact amount of testers that you want. Now, this is already going a little bit into pricing. So um, in this case, you're gonna see that the pay-as-you-go price is $35 per tester. This means that for each tester that you purchase, you will be paying $35. And, okay, that's a good question, Arthi. Thank you, thank you very much for, for asking. What is a good sample size for testers? Um, it depends, of course, a lot on the project, a normal, a uh, test is usually between five and 10 testers, uh, maybe 12. When we do our testing, we provide 12, uh, 12 testers, but usually everything between five and 10, maybe better seven and 10 is going to be a reasonable size for one test. So we can look at the pricing plans that fit into that later on, but just like as a rule of thumb, seven to 10 is a good quantity for, for, one, for running one test. And then once you click on place order, you will either be charged directly from the credit card, or if you have credits on your account, then you're going to be charged from your credits. One credit is one tester. So then it depends on how many testers you want. That's the amount of credits that will, going, will, will be taken from your account. Now let's have a look at the pricing plans. We'll go here to billing and explore our plans. Now we have three main pricing plans, plus, of course, the pay-as-you-go plan uh, that I mentioned. Now, pay-as-you-go can be helpful if you have a very large project, a one-time project, and then you just want to have like 600 testers run one test with 600 people and leave it at that. Then I would recommend the pay-as-you-go plan. Mostly, though, I definitely recommend the subscription plans, either monthly or yearly. The reason being is that, first of all, the subscription plans are monthly if you choose the monthly option and there is no minimum stay so you can really hold on for the subscription for six seven months and then cancel without needing to go on for the whole year the other thing that is a reason why i recommend the subscription plans is that the credits that you use roll over or better the credits that you do not use they roll over so the unused credits will stay in your account and you can use them in the following months where you're not going to be losing credits if you do not use them. So those are the reasons why I recommend the subscription plan, of course, plus the price per credit is more affordable uh, in the subscription plans. 
So the plans that we have are the pro plan, the agency plan, and the enterprise plan. The pro plan is our most popular plan. It includes 10 testers a month. So it would be like one maximum two studies a month and then 30 sessions with your own testers a month. You can have three admins, which are people that can purchase credits and 20 collaborators, which are uh, people that can review the tests and run them. And of course, all of the features that I showed you, choosing the demographics, asking screening questions and so on. These are included into the pro plan. And there's always the possibility of adding extra pay as you go credits to the, uh, the plan. So you're never gonna be running out of credits if you have an ad hoc project. The next plan is the agency plan. Now this plan is really good uh, if you have more testing need because it includes 30 testers a month and 90 sessions with your own testers plus unlimited collaborators and a dedicated account manager. The account manager is there to help you set up the first tests, give you feedback and input on how to create the test. And it's just there to answer um, all of your questions and uh, help you yeah, with the, with the testing. And then our final plan is the enterprise plan. It says, let's talk because it's basically exactly that. An enterprise plan depends so much on the needs of the company, uh, how many testers you want, how many testers of your own panel you want to include, um, what extra features you need from our side, extra assistance, um, that how you wanna pay if it's like per invoice or with credit cards. So there are very many different features um, that can be included into the enterprise plan. So if someone of you is interested in this type of plan, then please just answer to the email that I'm gonna be sending you later on. We'll talk about that. And then we can get into a conversation about this plan. So this is uh, the everything I would like to say about the pricing uh, for now. And with this, we are already almost at the Q&A session of the, the webinar. So what are the next steps? Um, first of all, I am going to send an email to everyone that was in assistance today, sending you the link to our free trial. Now, this is something that is really that I'm really excited about because usually our free trial includes two testers of UserBrain and five test sessions with your own participants. For people that all of you that were today at the webinar, we are going to double the amount of user brain testers that you get in the free trial. So you're going to get four user brain testers and five test sessions with your own participants for free, which is basically a full study because it's already not nine videos that you can get um, completely for free. So how do you get that? I'm going to be sending you an email uh, with the link to create an account. Creating an account is totally for free. You don't need to worry about entering your credit card details or anything payment related. Um, so that is for free. Uh, just create the account by entering email and password and answer my mail telling me that you have created the account, that you were in assistance uh, to the webinar, and then I will add those extra credits to your account. Once you run the free trial, you can totally sign up by yourself. So you really just need to enter into the billing section, select the plan either yearly or monthly that you that fits best to your needs, and then welcome aboard, start testing. What you can also do, of course, is send me an email with any questions that you might have. If you would like to have an extra chat with me because you are interested in flexible payment options or in the yearly plan or in the enterprise plan, then we can definitely set up a one-to-one -one and uh, have a chat about which enterprise pricing goes best with your needs. So I'm gonna do that uh, tomorrow. I'm gonna send you the email. So please check your spam because sometimes our emails do tend to land in spam. So if you don't get a mail from me, it's probably because it's there. Um, I'll do that tomorrow. I'm looking forward to all of your answers. And with that, I will open the Q&A session. So if someone has any questions, please pop them into either the Q&A box or share them in the chat and we will be ready to answer. So the first question comes from Arthi and he asks, can we request a one-time account manager for setup on an as needed basis? Good question. It is not something that we offer for now but you can always send me a message and I will have a look over the test. And also our support team is really helpful 
um, in answering the first questions that you might have. So the support team will handle that. It's not the same as an account manager because of course the support team has different responsibilities in this case, but they will be there to answer the questions um, that you might have. We have very good resources on our website as well. So we have a blog where we answer a lot of the questions. We have a customer knowledge base that is basically an FAQ. And we have an example in templates library uh, where we have over 50 examples of different user tests that we have created. So all of these resources can give you a really good insight into setting up the first test. Um, so if you're interested in this, then just tell me in the email that you're gonna be sending me um, and I'm gonna be sending you the links to those resources. Um, we started testing last week. Are we still eligible for two additional tests from this webinar? Good question. I'm kind of sure that the answer is going to be yes. Let me check with the billing team. And also, please ask the same question in the email uh, that you sent to me so that I have that in mind. But I'm kind of sure that we can do that. Will you be adding moderated testing and native app testing? Yes, we will. Native app testing is going to be the next upcoming big feature that we expect to release in the third part of the year. With native app testing, we're also going to include Android testing. So we're very excited about this. This is on our immediate roadmap. Transcripts on our, are on our immediate roadmap. And moderated testing is scheduled to start in 23, early 23. So yes, definitely upcoming native app sooner than moderated testing, but both is on our roadmap. Great. Does anyone else have a question to share? If not, out oh, there we have in the Q&A box, Android testing started is good. Uh, so we just answered that. What sort of email does a participant of our own choice receive as an invitation? Good question. Um, so you don't generate the emails automatically over the website. What you do get is if you are on a plan that allows you to test with your own testers, then you get uh, the possibility of generating a link and then you can send this link by whatever means uh, you want to your testers. We do it this way rather than sending an automated email because not all the customers want to invite their own testers via email. Some people like to post it on Twitter, Facebook, or just send it out in any other way. Uh, so that's why we have this flexible option of just generating a link and then you can use the link and send it to your own uh, participants. How large is the group of testers in the US? Uh, we have in total, we have about 85,000 testers, more than 85,000 testers worldwide. US and Canada together is more or less 60% from that panel. So of course it's always fluctuating, but US, uh, especially, specifically US Canada is our strongest panel in the, yeah, compared to other countries. Mm -hmm. Good, so those are the questions for today. Uh, oh, one more. Can you ask for specific backgrounds like US immigrants or people from cultural backgrounds? Yes, you can. You would do so using the screening tool. So if you want to ask about a specific background, then just use the customizable screening tool uh, doing that. As I mentioned, try not to have yes or no questions. Try to um, mask the right answer so that, you, that the people don't know what you're looking for, and then it's going to work. Then two things. To finalize, first of all, I'm going to start a poll asking to rate this webinar. So it's going out right now. It just launched it. It would be really great if you could give us some feedback uh, into how you like the webinar, if it was uh, what you were hoping for. Thank you so much for joining. The second thing that I just want to repeat is please be uh, looking at the emails uh, so that you can receive the link and then start the free trial, get back to me so that I can add those extra two credits to you and then get started with your testing. So thank you so much for joining. Thank you so much to Samantha and John for your amazing help. Uh, thanks for, for answering all of those questions and I hope to see you soon. Thank you so much, have an amazing day. Goodbye, bye-bye.